All right, let's go ahead and pull up the rubric. So here we go, 2019. You can look at scoring guidelines if you want. Let's take a look at that. So it tells me penalties, no penalty. And here is how it was graded. I can look at the chief re report. You can see the meet, uh, the scores. And their explanation of what each question was expected to uh, test you on. Right, so I definitely read this afterwards. And if you mess up on question one, let's say, then maybe you need to brush up on reading objects of a class and call methods. You know, uh, chief reader report is really good. Going statistics, we see what how many points each person got on, um, not each person, the average number of points obtained on each question. I always tell my students, you want to be on the right side of the mountain. This is something in college my professor told me, because most scores make a normal type distribution. And finally, you can look at all sample responses. What other students put, right? Here. So, we're going to go ahead and use this because it helps us and has some clarification as to if students get a point or not. Let's go to our number one. So number one, if you forgot, was all about the AP calendar. Do I initialize a numeric variable? Yes. If I did, I get a point. Right? And they say you don't earn a point if they use the variable for loop control only. See how easy it is to earn one point? You just have to make this variable to keep track. A counter of sorts. Right? Do they loop through each necessary year in the range? Right. Now, uh, you don't get the point if you consider years outside the range. Something I see a lot of students do because they're so used to looping through arrays is they forget to include the last year, year two. Year two is a valid year that you have to test for. Do they call is leap year on some valid year in the range? Uh, they still earn a point if you don't use it in a loop, right? If you just call it one time outside the loop, you still get the point. I do inside the loop right here, and you update count based on the result of calling a zip here. Yes, based on this result, based on what this returns, I update my count that I initialized up there. Um, do I return the count of leap years? Yes, at the very end, I return the count. Notice you have to loop, um, even if you loop incorrectly right if you mess up on this one right here you can still earn this point over here even if you forgot to initialize the counter you still earn a point lots of um partial credit is available all right so i think i get the full five points go ahead and look on here here's where my code starts do I call first day of year? I do, using a given year. Do I call day of year? Oof. Um, I do believe I use that parameters in order. Go ahead and check that. I think it was month of year. Yeah, exactly like the day of week that I'm trying to write. Do they calculate the value representing the day of the week? Uh, Again, I don't know if there's any error. I don't think there is. Look at their sample code. Okay, so their calculation is like mine. I don't think there's any error. And do they return the calculated value? Um, they still earn a point if they return a value from calling first day of year or day of year. Wow, so you still earn, you can get three out of four points if you got this line of code, this line of code, in this line of code without getting this line of code. They give you a lot of points. Wow. All right. So that was sample one. That was question one. Let's go ahead and look at two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. All right. Step tracker. My class, do they declare all appropriate private instance variables? Uh, 
Now, you don't earn a point if you omit the keyword private. AP College Board really wants you to make all your instance variables private. Do it. Uh, I, I got all the points. I think there's only four that I needed. I can check right here. Yeah, they have four. Awesome. Um, do they declare the header public step tracker? But int value, yes. Public. Do I use parameter and appropriate values to initialize instance variables? Uh, well, I've forgotten them active days. Do I have to do that? Right. Maybe I have to. Um, I added that in later. But also, don't forget that instance variables, um, they have a default value, and because it's an integer, this already has a default value of zero, so you don't necessarily have to do this inside the constructor. Um, hopefully, no greater. Hopefully, graders understand that you don't have to do that. Uh, add daily steps method that is right here. Do I have the header correct? Yes. Do I identify active days and increment count? Yes. I think that's here. If steps is greater than min active, I increment the count. And do I update the other things appropriately? Yes. And I can go ahead and look at their sample solution. Seems like, oh wow, did we name our stuff the same? Interesting. Okay. Active days method. Public int active days. Do I return the appropriate count? Yes, I return them active days. Okay. And notice you don't even have, this doesn't have to be calculated correctly from this, it just has to be the appropriate value, the, the appropriate variable. Average steps, do I calculate it correctly? Notice they ask for double. Ooh. Fail to handle special case where no days are tracked. I don't think I consider that. What if num days is zero? Then dividing by zero. So I probably need an if statement first. Oh wait, no. I still earned a point if I forgot to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, right, so yes, this is what I forgot to do. This would be the best solution. But notice, even if I divide by zero, I still get that point. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and update that right now. Uh, maybe use a red pin and put it right here. I need a if num days is equal to zero, return zero point zero. All right. Equal, equal. Wow. But thankfully, I still get a 9 according to the rubric. All right. Let's go ahead and look at number 3. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number 3. So, do I create an array list? I do. Um, do I access all elements in array tokens? Well, I'm using a for each loop, so I shouldn't have any bound errors. Do I compare strings and tokens with both instance variables? I do. Open or close. And do I add in original order? I believe so. Does this say any... Oh, notice I don't get the point if I use double equal sign for string comparison. Um, well, I'm, this is an array, not an array list. So, notice how I don't... I wouldn't earn some points if I do these parts wrong. And I return it. Yes. Oh, no, say also use a for each loop. So here, do I initialize the accumulator? Do, num close, num open. Access all elements in the array list? I think so. Compare string and delimiters with instance variables and update accumulator accordingly. Yes, if it's open. Otherwise, it's close. Do I identify and return the appropriate Boolean value to implement one rule? So I can get partial credit for this. 
I don't have to have both rules down. Um, if you forgot what I'm talking about. Remember there are two rules. As long as I implement one of them, I get this point right here. And this one is for all cases. I'm just going to look. Yes, I do believe I get full points. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at um, this number four. Number four. I create a new Boolean array to lights. I access all elements. I believe so. Send. I compute 40% probability. It's a 40% probability that the math.random will give me something less than 0.4. And I set values based on that probability. I believe so. Ooh. Wait, I use less than. I I think they're saying you can use equal even though it's like a but still pretty much forty percent. I also assign false values, let's see. Okay, so Okay, so they just use numbers and them columns, so that's the same thing. Um and this is their truthy value, true or false right there. Yeah. Okay. Full points right there. I'm gonna use my updated one. Do they access an element of lights as a Boolean value in an expression? I. Oh, I forgot to do status. Whoops. I need to put that right there. That was a whoopsie on my part. Let's see. Go ahead and there we go. I forgot to add that to my improved code. Yes, I do. I traverse specified column of array. Yes, right here. So I count the number of true values in traversal. Yes, if this is true, then I'm on. I prefer an even calculation and a multiple of three. Even multiple of three. Return true or false according to all three rules. So then I'm on zero. Uh, same thing right there. Oh, so they had it in an and statement. I do believe that if this is true, that's that is true. And I'm on zero, return false. Else, if if not true, so this is the else. I'm on one three, return true. Return status, which is this code. Awesome. So um, that was my attempt at the 2019 FRQ. Hopefully, you saw me implement some of the strategies that I told you about. Reading, translating, knowing the method headers, all those return statements, um, using examples, partial credit is awarded. And I hope this helps you when you take the 2020 FRQ.